All right, so we're going to do a quick tutorial of the Haunting of Saltmarsh, which is from Classic Dungeons and Dragons module U1, actually the Haunting of Saltmarsh, the Haunted House, as well as Undercover of Darkness, come from the module U1, and then also as part of this mini expansion, we've got U2, the final, or uh, Danger at Dunwater, and U3, the final enemy. We're just going to do this on R1, and I'm not going to go over the whole place. I certainly wouldn't be the best person to do that. I'm just going to show you, you know, if you're trying to get through this quickly. First, we're looking for a key to get us into the kitchen. That's how we're going to advance the quest. There's lots of rooms upstairs and downstairs and lots of keys that are going to be keys for different doors that you know can open the door that has the key but the but the key we're looking for to ultimately get through that kitchen is only going to be in one of three places and the first place we're going to look is going to be right here it's going to be in this locked trunk if it's here the combination is always 21573 you can find that combination you know on parchments or whatever throughout the house okay but it wasn't there okay and then the next place we're going to, the next place it can be is this room here, which can be unlocked. If you don't have a way to unlock this door, then you're going to want to do, there's a puzzle on the bottom floor that has, you know, they, that will, that will open this, but I have knock. So we're just going to knock the door. And then I think you got to search it out. And there, the, this quest has kind of a unique mechanic that there are things to search out other than secret doors. Normally in DDO, it's just like see, you search out traps and secret doors. In here, you can find like, you know, keys on the floor and stuff like that. And I'll demonstrate that. You'll find that right over here, see how we can't see anything, but I'm getting a message, something's hidden. So we'll go ahead and search and bam, a key appears. You see that? So you can search out. There was before this quest, there wasn't anything like that. Okay, so the first door we wanted to check was here. That was the trunk. Remember, the combination was two one five seven three every time. The second door is the red crystal door right here. It wasn't there, so it must be in the third location, which is also upstairs, right, uh, right here. This door is locked, so we'll just go ahead and knock it, and. The key should be here. I think we have to have a fight for. Oh no, the key. There it is. Okay, so it's going to start a fight when we pick up the key. Now there's plenty of other stuff to you know to do in this part of the house, but you don't need to. At this point, so that's the key we were looking for. And like I said, it's going to be one of those three rooms I just showed you. You can go back, straight back, you know, from the start, either on the top or bottom level. It doesn't matter. Okay, that's where we're going is straight back. Here, this is the kitchen. So if we'd gone upstairs and gone back, we would just come down these stairs here. And we do have a little spider fight. Now we're going to go downstairs. And there's going to be another little fight here, collectible. Be some spiders or rats, I thought, here. I hear them. I hear them spawning, but I don't see them spawning. Whatever. Uh, so there's a lever over here among these casks. That's got to get pulled, and that's going to open up the door back here. And then... We got to go back here because there's a douchebag named Ned Shawshank or something, Ned Shankshaft. And he, in the module, so he, this guy is actually a plant in the module that I showed you. And he's like here to distract you from what's really going on in the house is what he, his deal is. You know, and he, he will role play. If you find him earlier in the house, he will role play someone who's been captured. And, you know, you'll think, oh, you know, we're freeing this guy. And he just tries to basically distract you from what's really going on. All right, so now we're going to find the secret door after we've killed that douchebag. 
and we're gonna go here into the basement or into the caverns and oops, there's some rusties down here and the end fight is just through here we'll have a group of mobs to fight first and then there's gonna be a shrine There's your shrine and your end fight just beyond. And if you're doing this like on legendary, you know, especially if you're doing like high skull, you might find that uh, globe of invulnerability. You can get scrolls. You can you can cast it from your you know DQ staff, or if you you know if you have the spell, that's great too. That could be really helpful because this boss is a caster and he's going to do mirror image and he's going to have you know five or six of himself all throwing spells at you and it can get pretty gnarly on high skull. So, like I said, you might find that Globe of Invulnerability is really helpful in this fight. We're just doing this on Heroic R1, so it should be no big whoop. Oh, but my shield just wore out. I just recast shield. That was a little painful. No big deal. And there we go done and that is doing the haunting of salt marsh the quick way hell yeah and you can get your uh level four sapphire of good luck okay we've had sapphires of good luck plus one in this game for a long time but normally they're level 12 you can get a you can get a sapphire of good luck plus one that's level four from this chest and you can also get your uh clear water diamond from this chest and this is a level one diamond augment that gives you a point of regeneration per minute so that can be a night you know there's a there's a lack of super low level nice augments and so if you have one great you know it's not something you probably need to farm for but hey if you happen to go in cap then a point of regeneration will stabilize you so it's a pretty neat low b augment and that comes from this chest as well